This morning we are celebrating the advent of joy, and I'm looking uh, around the world and wondering where to find it. <laughs> where do I find joy? It's a word that has always been attached to the idea of something more than just happiness. And as the text was read this morning, it speaks to us of things that are significant that happen, not just something that makes us happy, but something that brings us feelings of an elevated or spiritual or sacred kind, is how the description in the dictionary says it. And as I think of the word joy, I think of a person who has sacrificed everything to be where they're at and accomplishes what they have been working so hard to do. I don't know if you've ever watched the Tour de France. If you've ever watched those guys ride their bicycles across France, it's an amazing thing to see all the time and the effort and the energy that they put in to riding all that distance. And you'll see them sometimes as they're riding up through the mountains, long from the plains that were so easy to pedal through. You see them up on those mountain passes, and they're giving it everything they've got. They haven't even got anywhere close to the finish line. They're not even close to accomplishing their goal. They're hundreds of miles away from where they eventually will end up. And stage after stage after stage through some of those mountain passes, they literally give everything just to be able to pedal that bike one more revolution. But there's nothing like the feeling that you have when you see those first group of riders round the corner coming towards the finish line of the Tour de France, and you see those guys are pedaling as hard and as fast as they can. As they see that finish line approaching, there are so many feelings that you experience of all the things that they've gone through, all the sacrifices they've made, all the little things they've done to get to that place. And as they cross that finish line, I think it's more than just happiness. It's more than just relief that they made it. There's this sense that comes to them in that moment of joy, a feeling that they've accomplished what they set out to do. I watched one rider, not of the Tour de France, of another, of a, another race, and he had been in the lead the entire race. And he thought for sure that he was going to win the race. And in the last couple hundred yards of the race, he dropped his hands from the handlebars, raised his hands over his head in triumph. What he didn't realize is one of his competitors had been riding along behind him and had been catching up the whole time. And just as he raised his hands in his victory lap for that last 200 yards, that rider that had been riding full speed that whole time and been given everything he had got up next to him and beat him by a wheel's length. Now imagine the difference in the emotions of the person who had been striving so hard and had just won by a wheel's length and the person who had their hands raised in victory thinking they'd won the race and realized at the very last moment, to their horror, that somebody else wanted it just a little more than they did. <laughs> now, as we look at the scripture today, we find shepherds on a hillside around Bethlehem. And we find an angel coming to these shepherds. I think from the shepherd's point of view, they were very happy that only one angel showed up to begin with. Because the first thing the angel said, I mean, one angel by himself is enough. 
but thinking about how they experienced this story as the angels came to them and began to sing. And I think about how we can experience joy if we've tried really hard to accomplish something and it actually comes to fruition and things work out the way we'd like them to work out and we've sacrificed everything for that moment, whether it be the Tour de France or an Olympic athlete or whatever it may be, those little glimpses of joy that we can get just from life itself. But I think about the joy of heaven on this day that we celebrate the advent of joy. You know, you look back through the moments in the scripture where you can see the joy of heaven. And one of the things that I see through in Genesis to the joy of heaven is when God has created everything that there is. And he looks around at all of his creation, the birds and the trees and the mountains and the valleys, the planets and all the stars that he's thrown into space, all the vastness of the universe that he has brought into existence with the words of creation. And as he creates humanity, and he looks in Genesis 1.26 and says, let's create them in our, in our image and in our likeness. And, and he creates them, and he looks through all of the things that he's done at the sixth day. And it says he looked over all of creation, and he said, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I, in that moment, in my mind, I, I see the, the joy of heaven. I feel the, the joy that God had when he had created everything that there was. And even though in his omniscience, he knew all the things that were going to happen in the future, even though in his uh, understanding of, of, of the universe and all the things that he knew of what would happen, he still says, from the beginning, it's good. It's worth it. I know what I'm going to have to do in the future. It's still good. I know all the things that people are going to do and all the things that are going to go on. It's, it's still good. I know all the problems and all the wars and all the disease and all the sickness and all the issues. Guess what? It's still good. You see, there's a sense in which the joy of heaven is evidenced in creation itself. Because God looks forward into time. And it says in the scripture that Jesus, even as, a, as he's looking ahead to what he's going to have to do and what he's going to have to uh, accomplish... Sorry about that. Outdoor system sometimes. As he looks ahead to what he's going to have to do and what he's going to have to accomplish, the scripture says that it was for the joy that was set before him that he endured the cross and despised its shame. And I think about joy today and what it encapsulates and what it means. I, I tried to come up with an acronym for joy. I love acronyms and things that work together because it helps me remember things. And the acronym that I came up for joy is Jesus out loves you. <laughs> I thought about some different ones like Jesus outgives you. Uh, I thought about Jesus outlives you. But I think Jesus, <laughs> I think Jesus outloves you really encapsulates the joy of heaven from creation all the way through. And I, 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 I think about the fact that at the end of time, when time is coming to its close, and the final chapters of human history are being written. And Jesus is preparing to come again. I think about the joy that he's going to experience as he looks at us. We were the joy that was set before him. We're the reason why he endured the cross and despised its shame. We are the reason why God sent Jesus to that manger in Bethlehem 
all these thousands of years ago were the reason. And as I think about that night so many years ago, I think about how the intersection of humanity and divinity came together in those moments to bring joy not just to heaven. Because the angels sang a particular song. And they sang the song that says, Behold, we bring you good tidings of great joy. You see, this intersection of divinity and humanity brought joy not just from heaven's perspective, but it brought joy from earth's perspective as well. As Mary looks down for the first time onto the face of Jesus and looks into the eyes of heaven for the very first time. And uh, it was not a scene that will ever be repeated. It was a one-time, one-opportunity moment for joy. And as the shepherds were being told outside of Bethlehem, this will be the sign to you. It wasn't that you will find him in the finest house in Bethlehem, surrounded by an adoring crowd of in-laws. <laughs> no, you're going to find him in the worst parts of Bethlehem. You're going to find him in a stable that normally would be used for animals. And you're going to find him in a place that no one would expect a king. But the angels that sang to the shepherds were not dressed in anything but the finest that eternity had to offer. And as they sang those songs to those shepherds, and as they spoke those words of promise into our lives today, it is because of this story that we have the opportunity for heaven's joy in our own lives and in our own hearts. Think about your own growing up years, the Christmases that you had, the things that brought you joy in your life as you've lived to this moment and to this place. Every true moment of joy is the direct result of God's image within you. You do not get to experience joy unless you understand that heaven itself is the source of that joy. We wouldn't have an existence. We wouldn't have an understanding. We wouldn't have an appreciation. We wouldn't have the ability to experience joy without the image of God within each one of us. And there's no way that any one of us can truly experience joy until we understand what it means to live in this love relationship with our Heavenly Father. We can have glimpses of joy. We can have small moments and flashes of what joy might be. But until our hearts are in tune with heaven's heart, we can never really experience or understand joy. Joy is the result of us coming together with heaven's heart and experience the embrace of love that only comes from heaven itself. To live in those moments, to understand forgiveness, to understand what it means to be unconditionally loved, to understand what it means that you can put your past behind you and you can start over again. That all the problems and all the situations and all the things you've dealt with can be put away and you can be in heaven's embrace. There's going to be a final moment of, of God's joy among the many moments that have happened in the history of earth and all the things that have gone on that he has promised us. And that is when we all sit down together at what's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. You see, God believes in family gatherings. I know it's been difficult with this past Thanksgiving trying to get everybody together as a family. I know with Christmas, some of us are thinking about how we're going to get people together and what that's going to look like. But God's promise to us is that one day we will all gather together in a huge feast 
And it doesn't matter how long it lasts or how many announcements that Bobby stands up and gives in an English accent. <laughs> As you think about the family and all our peculiarities and all of our personalities and everything that we are, <laughs> It's in that moment that God's going to look once again over that vast assembly at that vast feast, and he's going to say, isn't this great? Isn't this good? And all the people that have sacrificed their lives and have given everything for the cause of Jesus, all the ones who've put aside the sin that so easily besets us and ran the race that God had given them, all the little things that people had done and all the little things that people had sacrificed, there's going to be this great cloud of joy that hangs over this entire assembly. There's going to be this feelings beyond description of, yes, it was worth it. And the joy that we can have knowing that we're a part of this story today. Pardon me. <clears throat> that knowing we're a part of what this is going to look like brings us the confidence that when we bring children into this world and we look down into the faces of a newborn baby, we can say, I can look forward into the future and know that regardless of what happens, no matter what mountains that this little newborn baby may have to climb, no matter what valleys they may have to go through, it will be okay. And God's going to bring joy out of the suffering. He's going to bring joy out of the chaos and out of the pain. The psalmist tells us, and the prophets tell us, and all through the scripture it tells us that although the night may be dark, and although the situations of life may be overwhelming, don't forget that God's joy will come. Although the night may be long, joy comes in the morning. And I'm thinking about all the things that have happened this past year. And I've asked myself, where do I find joy in 2020? <laughs> where do I find joy as I come to the end of this year and I look around and I, I look at all the situations and all the things that have happened? And I think of the heart of heaven as he looks at his church gathered here today on the ball field and he sees the people who have week after week over this past year come out here and set up these chairs and put up these pop-ups and put up these speakers and week after week they have sacrificed to make sure that the church continues to move forward all the things that people have done here at Hope to adapt to online Zoom meetings of all things. All the things that people have done, those little extra things that people have done. And I think, you know what? That brings joy to heaven. That brings joy. When nobody else is looking that there have been people right here in this congregation without asking for anything, without expecting anything, week after week have been so faithful. I think of those moms and dads who've had their kids at home constantly. And you know, kids are great, but constant kids? Oh, I tell you, that can be a challenge to your Christianity sometimes. And I think of those mothers this year who've been so patient with their children and counted to 10 before they responded. <laughs> and those dads that have, that have 
been patient as they came home and the kids attacked them because they'd been cooped up in the house all day and they were patient. And I thought, you know, that, that's got to bring joy to the heart of God. I thought about the couples who have worked from home. And, you know, when you're working from home, when you're around your loved ones all the time, it, it's a mixed blessing, isn't it? It can be great and it can also be frustrating. And I thought about the, the couples who have loved each other and been patient with each other and asked God to help them. And I thought, you know, that, that brings joy to God's heart when he sees those things that we've done. I thought about all the compromises and all the things that people have done this year and all the little things that you may have sacrificed this year, those little thoughts and things that you said, okay, Lord, help me to get through this. Help me to have a better attitude, Lord. And I thought, you know, that, that brings joy to the heart of heaven. Because, you know, when you go through a trial, when you go through a struggle, it's not easy when you're going through it. And we're going through it right now. We're like that writer out in the Tour de France, headed up the side of a hill, and there's nobody there but us. And we're just riding along by ourselves, and we know the finish line is somewhere, but boy, it seems like a long ways away sometimes. <laughs> And I thought about the joy that we might experience next year when this disease begins to dissipate and things begin to get back to some semblance of normal. I thought about the joy of those doctors this year when they were struggling so hard to find a vaccine and they found this breakthrough where it all began to fall into place and all of the beauty of God's uh, creation and all the little cells and molecules that they were studying began to fall into place. And they realized, we've got an answer here. This is, a, this is a solution. This is a cure. And I thought about the joy that they must have experienced when they, when they felt that in their hearts to know that they were going to be able to have a vaccine for millions of people around the world that would change their ability to survive or to not make it. What a blessing, even through those things that challenge us, even through those things that are difficult. It's the trials of life. It's the obstacles of life. It's the obstacles of our journey that eventually are the sources of our greatest joy. The ability for us to experience joy is predicated on suffering and sacrifice. The ability for us to experience the greatest moments of joy are sometimes in those greatest moments of difficulty. You think about what a mother has to go through to have a baby and what she has to experience. To think about what Mary had to experience 2,000 years ago. And... And to think about something deeper than any human ability. Because when we truly experience joy, we look past what we are able to do and what we are able to accomplish. And we look into heaven's gaze itself. When you look into the miracle of a newborn baby, you look with awe and wonder because it is beyond what you can do. It is beyond what you can create. And you realize that children truly are an inheritance of the Lord. And that truly the fruit of the womb is his reward. And as we look past those things today, and as we look into the face of heaven itself, we truly experience Mary's joy to understand what that means and what that looks like. And I'd like for Lester, if he would, to come back. And I'd like for him to play that little chorus he was playing a little bit earlier. Not a lot of words, but the words that there are, are so beautifully written. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart. You're the heart. You're the joy. Think about that as Lester sings this song for us. And for those of you that know it, sing it along with him as we think about what it means when we sing, 
You're the heart of my contentment. Think about what that means. As we think about the word joy and what it looks like in our own lives. Let's sing together. Jesus, you're the center of A, a sense of God's presence here with us right now as we're sitting here on this ball field and for those of you joining us online and I don't know if joy has been an elusive thing for you this year or not I know for me personally it has been it hasn't been easy to to rest in, in God's presence and to have him be the heart of my contentment when all the other things of life are going on around me but I want to commit in these moments with you right here to understand once again that God's got this. It's going to be okay. He's going to see us through. Past the trials and the sorrow and the pain. The discontentment, actually. God's going to see us through. So would you pray with me and would you join me online as well as we just ask God to Help us reflect and remember once again what it means to make Jesus the center of our joy. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> as the angel sang so many years ago, we received good tidings of great joy, not just for the people in Bethlehem, not just for the shepherds, but for everyone for all time. So Lord, we celebrate... <clears throat> Pardon me. We celebrate with the shepherds today what it means to have you as the center of our joy and all the things that come against us and all the things that we deal with, Lord, that steal our joy. We're so glad that you love us and that it's impossible for us to love you as much as you love us. And that we are your joy. Lord, that sounds a, a little bit wrong to say that any one of us could be the center of your joy. But Lord, you've promised us that we are. So Lord, help us to live like that. Help us to reach out to you in faith and in trust past the problems and circumstances and situations and rest in you. For those of us that have been sidetracked this year from that joy, for those of us that have been overwhelmed and distracted by the things of life, Lord, 
Help us to rest in your joy today. To rest in that deep, abiding presence that you alone can give us through the most difficult parts of our journey. Be with us, strengthen us, watch over us as a community, as a church, as a country, as a world, as we live into these moments of Christmas, Lord, as these banners behind me signify your hope, your joy, your love, your peace. Be with us as we live into that this week. And may we make you, intentionally make you, Lord, the center of our joy this week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week as we talk about the peace of heaven.